A few weeks ago, I finally switched from GitHub Copilot to the Cursor IDE. I heard so many great things about Cursor, but I always thought surely Microsoft will eventually catch up and also add the same features to a GitHub Copilot. But the truth is, Cursor is still miles ahead of Copilot, they are not even in the same league. For one, the inline suggestions are so much better. Cursor can not only generate new code, it can also update or delete existing code, it can jump between different lines, it can automatically add imports for you, and it even has a memory so that when you change something in one file and then switch to another file, Cursor can usually guess what you want to change next. Then we have the Cursor agent, which is an AI chat that can also write code and do whole tasks by itself. GitHub Copilot also has an agent now, but it's still in beta and it's worse than Cursor's agent. Now most of my code these days is already written by AI, but I have to guide the AI and tell it what code I want it to write. In this video I am going to give you 6 tips on how to make the most out of Cursor that I've figured out over the last few weeks. And tip number 4 is especially cool, so make sure to watch this video all the way to the end. Welcome to Coding and Flow. I'm Florian Walter and I make web dev tutorials that cut the fluff and get straight to the point. So if you want to learn at high speed, subscribe to the channel. Tip number one, use a thinking model. When you press Ctrl I, you open the cursor agent. This is an AI chat that can also execute operations. It can write code, it can create files, it can even execute terminal commands if you allow it. Cursor now auto-selects a model for you, but from my experience this doesn't generate the best results. This is why I select the model myself, and for complex tasks like changing code in different files, I always select a thinking model. My favorite at the moment is Cloud Sonnet 3.7 and thinking means that the AI first generates a bunch of ideas and then reflects on these ideas before it actually generates the final solution, whereas these non-thinking models just spit out their first idea, so to speak, immediately. And you can even see these thoughts in the AI chat in this separate view, which is really cool. Number two, paste documentation links into the chat. Now you can reference almost anything in the AI chat, like files from your project or specific functions. You can even paste images, web links, or you can tell the AI to browse the web all by itself. But the context window of the AI is limited, so you want to be specific in what you put in there. I often paste links to a specific documentation pages in the AI chat and then I tell the AI to implement this. But it's important that you always double check the results, read the documentation yourself and make sure you understand what you just implemented because otherwise it will backfire earlier or later. Number 3. Set up cursor rules. In the cursor settings you can create two kinds of rules. User rules which are global and will automatically be added to all your AI chats and project rules which are specific to a project and here you can define different filters like file extensions or keywords that automatically add these rules to your AI chat if the filters match. Now I don't use project rules much because cursor can't update them so I use something different instead that I will talk about in a moment. But I use user rules to tell cursor how I want my code to be written. For example I have rules to never add demonstration code or useless comments. Now from my experience cursor Cursor doesn't always follow these rules, but it's still good to have them. Tip 4 is to uh, create a project specs file. Now as we talked about earlier, AI has a limited context window, so what I like to do is create a file called project specs, but you can name this anything you want, that contains the most important information about this project, like coding conventions or libraries we use or features the app has in one concise markdown file. This way, even when I start a completely new AI chat, I can add this file to give the AI all the important context and information. And here's the coolest thing, after the AI made changes to your projects, you can tell it to update the specs file. This is why I don't use project rules, because the AI can't edit these. But this way we can keep the project specs always up to date, even if we are lazy and don't want to do it manually. 
Tip number five is to divide your tasks. AI is really good at small specific tasks with clear instructions. If you give it too large of a task, it will drift off and just generate chaos. When you notice this happens, revert the changes and try again with a smaller, more specific task. You can imagine AI as a really diligent junior developer who can read docs at lightning speed, but it doesn't bring much experience or deep understanding. So your job as the developer now is to bring the high level thinking and understanding how the different pieces fit together. This is why tip number six is always verify the code. You can't be lazy when coding with AI because it will backfire. AI makes mistakes and some really terrible design decisions sometimes. So you have to guide it and tell it exactly what you want. When you use a library, I'm sorry, but you still have to read the documentation. You have to understand how to use the library. You can't trust the AI. You have to double check your code and make sure everything is correct. But the AI can do the typing for you, which saves a lot of time. AI easily writes 90% of my code these days, but I still have to tell it what I wanted to write. I think at least in the next few months and hopefully years, coding will be even more fun because of AI, because we have to do less tedious things like writing boilerplate code and we can focus on the more fun things like building a cool project, deciding on an architecture and really understanding everything on a high level. If you liked this video and you want to see more videos where I talk about Cursor or other AI tools, then tell me in the comments and also leave a like on this video. I could also make a full beginner guide on the Cursor IDE and guide you through everything from the installation through all the features. Let me know if you want to see this. And then I have a React Best Practices course which you can get for free at codingandflow.com slash React Best Practices. Check it out. And then I wish you a nice rest of the day. Happy coding or happy vibe coding or whatever. Have fun.